Zooming and panning within Resolve is an absolute breeze, so let's just jump right in and take a look at the various options we have available to us. Now, the first method we'll take a look at is just creating a static zoom that has no movement. Now, in this footage, I've got some potatoes cooking here, and about halfway through, I'd like to zoom in on this shot here. So let's come back again and play this back, maybe about here, I'll split that. And then here, let's split. And then I'm going to hold Alt and then use my mouse wheel to zoom in a bit. I just want to adjust this so we're kind of close to where the next shot begins. So I'll click, hold, and drag. Now in our viewer, we have two images. The left one is the last frame on the previous clip where we made the cut. And then the right is where we're switching to the next shot. So this is going to be perfect for that cut. So now we've got this clip isolated. And that is, let's zoom out a bit. Okay, so it's important that we isolate the clip that we want to zoom in on first. So now that we've done that, I'm going to click in the upper right hand corner to open up our inspector. And let's position our playhead over this clip so we can see the amount of zoom that we're adding. I can come to the zoom here and then just hover and then pull to the right horizontally to zoom this in. And then let's position our playhead back a bit spacebar to play back and you can see that we let's zoom out a little bit more and we'll start that again okay so we've got our static zoom it's pretty straightforward so that's a pretty straightforward process let's go ahead and position our cursor here again and then in order to reset this zoom we can come over to the right we have this little arrow that we can click on we can also double click on the name zoom so i'll double click on that and then we return to the original zoom position now another option that we have is to, in the bottom left corner of our viewer window, we can click on this transform mode button and then activate that and we can see we now have some controls. So I'm actually going to use the mouse wheel, just hovering in the viewer, I'm gonna mouse wheel down to zoom out a bit. We can also, let's come to the corner here, click hold and drag to zoom that in and these work in tandem with our controls in our parameters in the inspector. So you can see that the adjustments, as I adjust the frame here, our zoom is being adjusted in the inspector. So these work together. It's just depending on what preference you have where you'd like to work. Okay, so let's uh, zoom back in and play this back. And we've got the same thing, just a different method. We'll again reset using the circular arrow, arrow this time. Now let's take a look at dynamic zoom, which is going to allow us to create a more gradual movement within our zoom. And all we need to do is within our inspector, we can just turn it on. So if we scroll down, we see we have dynamic zoom here. And let's position our playhead at the beginning of this clip or just a bit before. And we'll just click to activate our dynamic zoom, this little slider here that turns red when it's active. And now when I play back, we can see that a dynamic zoom has been added, but it's not actually working how I'd like. We actually zoom in and then start to gradually zoom out, but I want to gradually zoom in. So in order to remedy that, it's very simple. Let's click on the dynamic zoom panel to expand that out. And we see that we have a swap button. So let's go ahead and click on that and then play this back. And then now we gradually zoom in. Now we can also control the speed of our zoom with the zoom ease controls here. By default, this is going to be on linear, which provides a constant speed for our zoom throughout the clip. But if we'd like more of a gradual or slower beginning to our zoom, we can select the ease in. If we'd like a slower pace at the end of our zoom, we can choose the ease out, or we can have a combination of both with ease in and out. So these essentially control the acceleration and deceleration of our zoom speed. So definitely experiment with these to get the feel that you're looking for within your dynamic zooms. So even though we've been talking about these concepts for a few minutes now, as you can see, once we've isolated the clip we'd like to add our zoom to, we've only got a couple of clicks to add the zoom using these tools and parameters. But what if you'd like more control of the zoom amount and position? Well, that's easy to do in Resolve also. 
Let's go ahead and reset our dynamic zoom by clicking on the circular arrow here at the top. And I'm actually going to make our viewer a bit larger here. Let's hover in the viewer to zoom in a bit with the mouse wheel. And coming back to the bottom left hand corner, let's click on this drop down menu and then change to the dynamic zoom. Now we can see that we have a couple of frames in here. The green frame is our starting position and the red is where we will end up. I think of this as a traffic light. So green is go where you start and red is stop where we end. And this is why when we initially used the dynamic zoom within our inspector, it wasn't working as we or as I wanted because the green where we start at starts by zooming in, then it zooms out to the red. But if I were to click on the swap within the inspector, again, as with the transform controls being tied in with the transform controls in our viewer. So as I adjust this, we can see the changes to our parameters here. And we can double click on zoom to reset that. Let's come back to our dynamic zoom. If I want our green frame to start fully zoomed out and then zoom into our red frame, we can just come to the swap within our dynamic zoom. Let's click on that. And we can see that these have now been switched. Let's position our playhead before our clip, playback, and then now that functions as I'd like. And of course, we can also adjust these manually. So let's position our playhead once again. And what I'd like is to start zoomed all the way out but let's zoom in pretty deep here and we can actually even add a bit of panning here. So clicking inside of these frames is going to allow you to adjust its horizontal and vertical position. We can even hold shift to constrain the uh, position within our X and Y axis. So if I hold down shift and drag horizontally, I can't, even if I move my mouse wheel vertically up and down, it's not allowing me to do that. So holding shift is going to constrain to our X and Y axis. If I release shift and hold it again and then move this up, now I'm only constrained to the Y axis. So we'll go ahead and position this here. And then now when we play back, we not only zoom in, but we have this panning effect as well. And we can see in the center here, we have this red line that indicates our motion path. Now let's go ahead and reset everything again in our inspector for the dynamic zoom. We'll click here and our frames have returned to their default position. Now we can also use keyframes to create our zoom effect. So let's position our playhead again at the beginning of our clip. And I'm going to turn the dynamic zoom off. And let's actually collapse that window for now and scroll up to our transform. And let's actually hide these frames by clicking here. And the first thing we need to do is add a keyframe. So this little diamond icon, I'm going to click once on that. We can see that it turns red, indicating that a keyframe has been added. Let's drag our playhead to about the center of this clip. And then here, all we need to do is just zoom, increase that a bit, and a keyframe is going to be added automatically. We'll come to the end of the clip. And I'm just going to use the right arrow on my QWERTY keyboard to position that. And then here I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, so now let's check that out and see what it looks like. We should zoom in quickly and then zoom back out. Okay, if we'd like to remove our keyframes, let's come up to our transform and just click in the uh, reset button here. And finally, let's hop over to the cut page because we have some options here that we can make use of as well. I'm just going to click once to be sure that this clip is highlighted. And in the bottom left corner of our viewer, we have this button here where we can click to access some various tools. And the third one here is our dynamic zoom. So we'll click on that. Let's click on the slider, make sure that that's red and that it's active. And then here we have some buttons that we can make use of a zoom preset. So if I click once on that, we can see that the frame, the green frame, our start frame has been adjusted a bit. 
and I can, let's play this back. Okay, so we have that default behavior where we're jumping in, zoomed in, and then zooming back out. Just the same as on the edit page. Let's come back. We have the swap here. So this little double arrows, if I click on that, you'll notice the frames here when I click, that's gonna swap those. So this is gonna function as we wanted, as we saw in the edit page, the gradual zoom in. Now we also have some other presets here. So in the center, we have a pan preset. Let's click on that and play this back. We've also got an angle preset. Okay, and of course these can be swapped as well. And then all the way to the right, we have some easing controls. By default, this is gonna be on linear. And we also have ease in, ease in and out, and then ease out. Let's go ahead and apply the ease in and out and take a look at that. Okay, so we can see that gradual introduction of the zoom, then it switches to linear and then eases back out. Okay, so these are a variety of ways that we can go about adding our zoom and panning within Resolve. I hope it's been helpful and I will see you in the next tutorial.